what's going on family listen we've had a lot of amazing guests on this show and perhaps you may have never ever listened to those episodes so we wanted to present a new segment called SONW Classic where we go back we revisit those iconic conversations and give those full episodes back to you sit back and enjoy this week's SONW Classic ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the podcast and listen I'm excited for this one because we are here with a guest, not just any guest, somebody that is phenomenal in terms of marketing, best-selling author, the one and only Tina is on the show today. So let's break it down for, for people right now that are listening. You're very good at creating a path. Like, like, what would you say to that young listener right now that's struggling to create a new path and a new version of them? I would say it's always really important to listen to yourself and listen to really or or tune into what you want to do with your life i often remind people i became an entrepreneur in 1996. um that was before the world knew the mark zuckerbergs and that whole generation of entrepreneurs right mm. it, when i became an entrepreneur it was still like a weird thing to do and people would say to my parents all the time tina's so smart she was a valedictorian she could be a lawyer she could be a doctor but she's doing this entrepreneurial thing right so it wasn't mm -hmm. like um at that time to go into entrepreneurship was this like huge win it was like oh wow you wasted your skill set to go do that thing you know and so mm. i think you have to be really clear on what you want in your own life understand that a lot of people project their own fears onto you and not to like allow that in any way or shape or form to like influence how you see yourself you know and to just be really clear headed about what you want, why you want it and do what you're going to do to get there. Talking about somebody guys right now who was named a hundred most creative people in business. Tell us a little bit about that experience at 16 years old. I was definitely an accidental entrepreneur at 15. I answered an ad in the back of 17 magazine to uh, take a job writing for a newspaper for girls called the new girl times. And I did not know that my product review editing job would turn into market research. So, you know, one thing would happen and I'm like, that's cool. Another thing would happen. I'm like, okay, that sounds great. Being a senior in college, I was six years into my business and um, sitting in my advisor's office saying, I don't really know if I want to do this. I'm like, I want to be a serious business owner. So maybe I should go to law school. And what I agreed to do after that conversation was just try it for a year and, and mm. see if I still feel the same way. And, you know, within three years of graduating college, I had my cover story in O Magazine 2005. Wow. Huge game changer, had opened an office in New York City. And so just know, I was always questioning along the way, like, am I still doing the thing I want to do? Am I still enjoying this? Or should I just go do something else? What would be your advice to someone right now who's struggling to find those little corners of time to doing something that they love and enjoy? So one thing, while incredible opportunities in my career, I have always shown up for those opportunities. And I think mm. it's incredibly important um, to be prepared. Don't ask anyone to give you an opportunity that you're not prepared to show up for. I don't know where we learn this lesson that we should try to reach everyone, that we have to have something for everyone. No, you don't. You need to have something really specific for a really specific group of people and be the best at servicing that group with whatever it was, right? Why do you feel in terms of marketing, why do you feel a strategy and having a marketing strategy is important? Oh, goodness. I mean, this is the perfect question for what we're living through right now. Um, what happens if TikTok goes away? Ooh. Ooh. What happens? If you have it. built your business around a tool, tools can change. But you need to build a strategy around how you're going to acquire your customer. And, and too often, people don't really know who their customer is. They go with a tool. And what does a tool do when it's nascent and new? It makes a lot of noise, right? Mm -hmm. So if you get into, if you got onto TikTok before it became TikTok, you're able to grow, right? Think about the early Clubhouse. You know, people in Clubhouse Ooh. grew to a million plus. What do we? Who is talking about Clubhouse anymore? I'm still talking to millennials. I, I mean, I have to reach my middle grade readers through librarians. That is who sells my books for the last 15 years because I carved out a niche in writing to at-risk readers. So wow. who is focused on getting at-risk readers to read? Librarians. By the way, I didn't know that. That goes back to listening to your customer. I kept hearing, one time my publisher said, we need you, most people say no, but will you go to this librarian conference? They, they say that they recommend your books a lot to kids who are on the cusp of not reading. And I'm like, that's some data. 
I absolutely mm. am going to go to this conference. And what did I do? Start talking to librarians and thought, okay, these are the gatekeepers to keeping my books in school. If you are not talking about your customer where you're like, he would never go there. He's not doing that. He's spending his five to seven, you know, PM time doing A, B, and C. If you don't know that, then you don't really know your customer. And then you're just generalizing, right? And that means early on talking to your customers. How did you find my business? What is interesting to you? That research and how they get to you is so incredibly important. Mm. And a lot of times we just blow past that because we're trying to sell you something, right? We're not listening to how we fit in. And so then we can't craft a marketing plan because we actually don't know our customer. We know what we're trying to sell someone. We don't know who is actually going to be the person to buy. What do you feel are the marketing strategies that are effective? Uh, I'm learning this myself and I, you'll understand what I'm about to say as a marketer and someone I feel like is a classically trained marketer, we are taught, we know marketing is an art and science, but I'm definitely from a generation of marketers who were really into their art and things mm. looking beautiful and <laughs> things showing up spectacular. And we are in a time right now that is rejecting that, that is all about <laughs> authenticity in a way that I'm sorry to tell your listeners pains me to my core, not because I don't like to be authentic, but I like pretty things. And what I'm being told over and over again is like, raw, or edgier. I'll give you an example. I filmed, I had two reels go out yesterday. The first one was all of my photos from a photo shoot where I had a stylist and a makeup artist. <laughs> and they, I thought it was everything. And a lot of people thought it was it, fire. Right. <laughs> My niece told me to do this. I have a 13 year old niece who's like a TikTok star. So she tells me, mm. like, Tina, just like when your makeup artist is starting to do your makeup, just start talking to people. I'm like, while my face is being worked on, just talk to people. Mm -hmm. I did it and she was right. Converted more people. This is changing. There is something changing now when we are not allowing a studio, which is a very powerful marketer, to serve up what they want. We have decided to reject that and say, mm. I want to know where you bought your eggs. I want to know who provided your milk. Like we want every scandal of the milk truck, but like we wanted to know all of those things. And so I'll tell you, it's the biggest thing happening right now. Mm. People are so sick of inauthentic people and inauthentic ideas and just a whole bunch of BS that they're like, I just want to see you strip down, taking your makeup off at night, right? Like that's just where we are, where people are like, I don't want glossy over the top marketing. I just want you to talk nope. to me as a person. And I think there are a lot of brands that exist that try to offer us an elevated life. Mm -hmm. um, and that is based on their idea of what looks good, right? Mm. Where I really believe in giving people tools to elevate their life and only you can define what that means for you. You know, for some people, an elevated life could mean um, complete financial freedom. For others, it could mean, you know, time to explore education and to spend as much time getting degrees and doing things that, I, that you know, really sparking curiosity and creativity. Um, for others, it can mean raising their families. Like I think uh, there's no one prescriptive idea of what it means to elevate your life, but it does require that you take some time to ask yourself the tough questions. Stop setting goals that make no sense for you in your life. You know, people wonder why they're not achieving goals. It's like, because that's not the right goal for you in this season of your life and you really mm. don't want to do it. And you just haven't found the words to articulate them into yourself. School's over, now what? What advice would Tina Wells give? But I would say the now what, it becomes asking yourself a series of tough questions about what you want your life to look like. Wow. Um, and then deciding if you can commit to what it's going to take to get there. Make clear what you want and then ask yourself, can I be disciplined enough to go pursue this and to make this happen? Yo, what you think? I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I want to know what you learned. So if you wouldn't mind, would you take a screenshot of you listening to the podcast on your phone right now? Upload to your Instagram stories, tag me at Sean R. Anthony underscore, and then let me know in that Instagram story what is one thing that you learned. I love hearing from you, my listeners, thought leaders, former or current students all around the world. Let me know. And while you're doing this, go inside the podcast app, subscribe, leave a five star review and a five star rating. Again, this helps us reach more people. And if you want to be a part of this mission, helping us change the world one person at a time, it makes a massive difference by you leaving a review. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. And remember, dream it, believe it. Go out and get it.